welcome to the Lockdown Learning Podcast. I'm your host, Kate Coleman, a mother to three boys and a staff member at a self-directed school in the UK called East Kent Sudbury School. And I'm your other host, Mark Gallivan, a father and also a staff member at a Sudbury model school in Colorado, USA called Alpine Valley School. This is the final episode of our series. Just like the lockdown itself, creating this podcast has been quite an unexpected and wild ride. Though Mark has had some experience making a podcast before, this was my first time being a part of one and I had quite a bit to learn. For example, I learned that the best place to record my audio was actually underneath my duvet. Kate and I believe that learning is the work of a lifetime, not something that is only the providence of young people. We started this podcast as a way to help parents who were struggling with homeschooling their children for the first time after the world essentially shut down due to the COVID-19 pandemic. And even though it was our intention to provide an education, we also received one as well. On this series, we've heard from a wide variety of guests on a lot of different topics. We've learned about the basics of home education, what it means and how children actually learn from their homes. We've explored what happens if we let go of the reins and let children direct their own learning. And we've tackled difficult subjects like mental health and children with special needs. And we thank you sincerely for taking the journey with us. With lockdowns easing in places across the globe, we wanted to end our series with a hopeful note about the future. We've all seen over the past few months just how quickly our lives can change and the hidden blessings that accompany the challenges. For this episode, we reached out to a variety of participants, some of whom you've heard on the show before, and asked for their hopes for the future of education. And we were absolutely overwhelmed by the number of responses. We hope you feel encouraged and inspired by what our guests today have to say, and we hope that you and your family also take this chance to ask yourselves what you want for your own educational futures. We also hope you live in a place with lots of educational choices or that you can create them for yourself if you don't. As always, there are a lot of resources in the show notes for this episode to help you along your journey. And if you want to get in touch with Kate and I, you can reach out via email at podcast at alpinevalleyschool.com. We had a bit of a problem with our previous email address, and I apologize if you sent us a message that was not answered. Please reach out to our new email, podcast at alpinevalleyschool.com, and I promise we'll respond. However you move forward after the lockdown, we hope that this show remains a valuable resource for you and your family. We invite you to share the show with anyone you think might benefit and to leave us a review in your podcast app of choice so that other families can find us. And as always, if you want to learn more about our schools, you can find East Kent Sudbury School online at eksss.org.uk and Alpine Valley School online at alpinevalleyschool.com. We're going to leave you today with the wise words of our guests and their wishes for the future. But no matter what, we hope that you will always take time to take a deep breath, hug your kids, and pat yourself on the back because we know you absolutely deserve it. Be well. Hi, I'm Anna Hobbs. I just recently joined the East Kent Sudbury School staff team. I have three kids. When asked the question, what is my hope for the future of education? Gosh, my mind just blows up. (laughs) There's so much that could be said. I guess the biggest thing I want to see is change. I want to see change. There's a quote by Socrates that really inspires me when I think about change. He says, the secret of change is to focus all of your energy, not on fighting the old, but on building the new. It's something that we can do. At the moment, it's a one size fits all system. And that does not reflect humanity, the beauty of humanity. We are unique. Every, every single child is unique. And our system doesn't reflect that beauty of humanity at all. And so I would love to see creative choices that are available for 
children when it comes to education. I'd love to see variety and colour be brought into education. I'm sure there's so much more, but I hope that's inspired you. Thanks. Hi, I'm Harriet Patterson, and I'm a researcher into alternative education. And to me, the heart of thinking about alternative education lies in the one hand on how we understand education and what we think education is, and on the other hand, how we understand children and indeed people in general. And for me, it's that question of how do we bring those two things together? What's the interface between our understanding of education and our understanding of people? And how can we flex that thinking in imaginative and releasing ways? So my early academic background was in social anthropology, and I continued to be fascinated uh, by the breadth and depth and variation that there is in human culture geographically across the world and historically through time. And I'm fascinated by the possibilities that are inherent in being a person, the flexibility, the plasticity that exists in the human existence. And that's the kind of flexibility and uh, plasticity that I want to bring to our thinking about education. So in terms of my hopes for the future of education, my big hope, my overarching hope is that we can somehow, as a society, reach an understanding of education that's separate from political ambition and political ideology. That's an understanding of education that's not wedded to the production of people as resources of the state. So we move along a trajectory from good pupils, good students on their path to being good workers, good citizens, and indeed in the fullness of time, being good parents and good family members. And throughout that trajectory, our understanding of what is good, what it means to be good, is determined by political powers. And my overarching aim is that we find ways to separate that concept of good from the idea of education. But at the same time, we also know now that some of the certainty has faded out of life. So some some things have gone. But we've also had an opportunity to glimpse the way that things could be different. And to understand that difference is meaning that we do have a choice. There are other possibilities about who we are, what we want to be, how we want to live. And the question of education is one of those possibilities. And in recognition of that, my hope now is that we can start to have those conversations, those really meaningful conversations, big and little ones, that we need to have to really explore those possibilities and to open up our society's thinking about about the nature and practice of possibilities in education. Hello, my name is Kezia Cantwell-Wright and I'm a staff member and founder at East Kent Sudbury School. What are my hopes for the future of education? It's a big question. It invites us to think big thoughts, dream big ideas. Whilst my hopes for education will bring big changes to people's lives, actually my dream is quite simple and small, human scale in fact. I think that before we can begin to imagine how things might be, we first have to recognise how they are now and how they came to be that way. Until now, although many people have found our education system uncomfortable and agreed there are issues with it, issues like children not leaving with the desired grades, employers finding graduates ill-equipped for the workplace, uh, issues with children suffering from mental health and anxieties, still the majority of people accepted and continued with the system, perhaps believing that whilst not perfect, it's still the best way, perhaps believing there is no other way. To change a system, you have to recognise someone created it and you can create a new system. The lockdown has thrown our normal patterns and ways of being into disarray. We've had to find new ways to do things. We found that you can fit work around family, that you don't need to travel across the world to do business and that many children and parents will have experienced life without school and found that learning happened anyway. My hope is that parents have had more time to spend talking and being with their children and that children will have had more time to think, to get to know themselves, find out what they love and are interested in and how to find out information for themselves. In the end, learning doesn't need a big complex system. It just needs people, time and space. My hope for the future is that education will be more about the individuals and their experience will be personal and on a human scale and that we'll recognise the wondrous variety within ourselves. 
We won't have the creativity and imagination to face the problems of the future if we raise our children to all be the same. My hope is that instead of a catch-all, broad-brush, complex education system focused on results and accountability, we will have lots of smaller learning spaces that serve different needs and work in different ways, and the children and families will have the freedom and choice to find the learning experiences that are best suited to them. Finally, my hope is that the experiences of lockdown will mean that families will seek out and demand this change and that our governments will no longer be able to ignore the need to do away with school and embrace learning instead. Hello, my name is Danny Whitehouse. I'm a long-term supporter of democratic education through various initiatives. So you might guess my hope for the future of education is for more democratisation. I want to see learning environments where power is shared between adults and children and where learning is led by the learner. The future of schools should be the end of schools. I feel really strongly that the current education system is detrimental, not just to a minority, but to a majority of young people. It suppresses individuality. It ferments chronic anxiety. It chucks a lot of arbitrary information at children and some deluded hope that some of that information might stick. As we improve our understanding of how learning actually works, I hope we'll see lear more learning communities where children learn what, where, when, how, and with whom they want, where they really shape their own experience. The curriculum then would be an emergent one, tailored to each individual, emerging out of children's innate and ever-changing interests. As we start to emerge from lockdown cocoons, I hope we'll see a great diversity of new ways of doing education. I expect that many parents will opt to home educate, seeing how much happier and more motivated to learn their children have become without school. I really hope we'll see some co-parenting collectives, some cooperative education projects, new education charities offering alternatives to school, new learning communities with expert facilitators offering self-directed education, but we'll see more play workers and adventure playgrounds, more forest schools, more woodcraft folk groups, more youth work, just generally more positive relationships between adults and children, and ultimately less schooling. So less transmission-based, top-down, rows of desks and blackboard type education. That's my hope for the future of education. My name is Artemis Fair. I am the founder of The Garden, a democratic learning community for children and young people in Bristol. My hopes for the future of education are that schools move towards being self-directed learning communities where children and young people have autonomy over their education and their lives. I would like to see teachers become more like mentors or facilitators who help children and young people develop the skills to become intrinsically motivated and confident self-directed learners. I would like to see conflict resolved non-judgmentally, ideally using transformative justice, which acknowledges power dynamics and builds empathy and pro-social behaviours. We need to throw coercive behaviour management, such as punishments and rewards, in the sea because there's no morality in duty. I would like to see the development of a digital e-portfolio system, perhaps using blockchain technology, that will make a hierarchical and elitist qualifications and institutions redundant. Most of all, I hope for recognition that the oppression of children and young people is the root cause of all unnecessary suffering. Hello, my name is Crystal Hartcombacher. I'm from the Netherlands. And since 2002, I've been involved in founding and also working in Sudbury model schools here in the Netherlands. What are my hopes for the future of education? And I want to start with this time that we are living in now, because more than ever, we feel that these are very, very, very uncertain times. And more than ever, we also feel the need to abandon traditions and systems that have brought us uh, a lot of fortune till today. There is really an urgency to change and especially to change our educational systems. More than ever, society needs creative, adventurous and unconstrained individuals who can come up with new solutions for a new age. In the past few centuries, educational systems have emerged based on direct, in direct instruction and standardization of knowledge on basis of the Prussian educational model. 
This model focused on instructing groups as efficiently as possible, while learning processes are highly individual. The educational systems based on this model have been successful in their task of educating large populations in the past, but the question arises whether the systems are still suitable for the requirements of the present and future times. We know that current educational systems lead to many problems, such as a loss of self-reliance, creativity, an inquiring mind. Other problems, like the socioeconomic segregation, are a source of concern with regard to education. And all these problems cannot be solved within the framework of the system. Despite the many investments, the quality of education has declined. More money is not a solution. It's time to question the ideas on which education is based. Today, more than ever, shows that the world is facing challenges that cannot be solved with old ways of thinking and working. The radical changes that this time brings require structurally different forms of education, groundbreaking and radically innovative experiments. There is now the urgency to support educational models based on a completely different system. If an educational system were to be designed today, what design features would be used? Wouldn't it be better to base education on how men learn best naturally? What would education look like if we centralize self-education and intrinsic motivation? What would be the effect of attending such a school on people's lives and on society? Children are human beings and young people should be treated on the basis of human dignity and equality, which forms the basis of human rights. Treating young people as incompetent and incapable decision makers is an act of childism. We should start to acknowledge that. My hope for the future is that we are going to open up our educational systems to welcome new forms of education. Systems that are based on children as full human beings, as competent decision makers. Thank you. Hi, this is Mark Gallivan. I'm one of the hosts of the Lockdown Learning Podcast. And my hope for the future of education is that no matter what methodology we follow or what the actual structure of the school looks like, that we prioritize the message to children that they are enough, just as they are. That they are not vessels waiting for us to fill them with our wisdom or knowledge. That they're not ready or necessary to mold them or shape them. That the, the person they already are, the person they came into the world as, is good enough. And that doesn't mean that we don't have things to learn, all of us, but I think there's a real emphasis on growing children into the right kind of people. And I hope that in the future, we see them from birth as already the right kind of people. I'm Jana Clements, co-founder of Riverstone Village learning community in South Africa, mother of two, author of Help My Kid Hates School, as well as the Helping the Butterfly Hatch book series on facilitating self-directed education. My hope for the future of education is for consent to become centered in all approaches and forms of education. In terms of young people having the same rights that adults do, in terms of choosing what they want to learn how and where and why and with who and in what ways. Uh, I'd also really like to see a world where traditional forms of knowledge and indigenous languages are respected just as much as English and just as much as the modern westernized industrial culture and post-industrial culture. I'd like to see communities taking back the responsibility for providing educational environments and experiences for young people locally in a small is beautiful way, so that young people have the option of learning in small, intimate contexts where everybody knows everybody and there's mutual support. And at the same time, 
there's a rich variety of resources and options and ways to travel where needed. I would love to give young people the world as their playground. I've never seen a young person who didn't know how to follow their bliss when allowed to. And I think we'd see some extraordinary learning happen. And I think that that could be a really, really good thing, not just for the young people involved, but for their communities and for the whole of our species and our planet. Hi, everyone. My name's Kate Coleman. And if you've been listening to the series, you may know that I'm a founder and staff member of East Kent Sudbury School. My hopes and dreams for the future of education. It's a big question. It affects us all. Education has the ability to change the world. It won't come as a shock to say that I want more autonomy and more democracy within mainstream education, but that is really just the start. My hopes and dreams come firstly from a personal place, from watching two of my children suffocate and lose themselves at school, with one even developing quite severe mental health problems, to them being given the chance to heal and to grow in a free and trusting environment. My dream is that children will be respected as equals and will have a direct say over what, how and when they learn and will no longer be pitted in direct competition with their peers. That individuality is celebrated and encouraged, and that pioneering settings like ours that achieve this are given the funding and recognition that I believe they deserve. There is another way we can change the world. I believe being a part of an equal, respectful, democratic community fosters the skills that are imperative for the future of humanity. I dream that people step off the treadmill of life and instead forge their own new paths that are meaningful and bring joy to them. My immediate hope is that we can start to move forward and recognise the constructs of schooling as they are are in direct conflict with the environments most conducive to learning. Hopes and dreams are all very well and good, but how do we take the steps to make them a reality? While I may unrealistically wish that we could overhaul the system and start again in one foul swoop, but it's unlikely to happen. Small steps must be taken and I think parents hold more power in insisting on these changes than maybe they realise. Small steps perhaps would be things like an end to reward and punishments in the classroom. No more your name is on the storm cloud or you haven't written enough so you can't go out to play after lunch, which incidentally was the case more than once for my dyslexic son. Perhaps another small step could be that we increase playtime or free time within schools or that we stop putting more significance on certain subjects than others. These are just a few ways in which the start of change could happen, but most significantly, we need to recognise the oppression of children, and we need to understand how we can support children and young adults to find their own voice and their own path without judgement. I don't think for one minute these things are unachievable, and I hope that the lockdown has awoken parents to the joys of watching their children learn freely. I'm Sophie Christoffi. I'm the CEO of Phoenix Education. I'm an unschooling parent and I work with parents and people that live and work with children on how they can become more consensual in their relationships and in their lives. A question of what I hope for, for the future of education. I hope for an education culture that is more consensual, where the people involved have a voice they have choices, they feel free to be themselves, they can explore, they can be curious, they can make mistakes, and, and they can learn what they need to learn for themselves and for the world we live in right now. I am glad that some people are, are experiencing that education now, and I want for it to become normal for, for more people, basically. Here's to the the opportunity that we have right now with so much disruption and questioning that that we might get to a place of reflection and acknowledgement for for the rights of everyone. Hello, I'm Derry Hannam. I was a teacher for 20 years, became deputy head of a community secondary school, then an inspector and an advisor finally to the Council of Europe and the UK government in citizenship and human rights education. I've always believed in choice and tapping into the interests and desires to learn of young people. What are your hopes for the future of education? Wow, I'd better set some limits. I believe in lifelong learning, but I'll limit my remarks to English compulsory school age, 4 to 18, though actually most of it applies to life. And I'll try to be totally and utterly uncontroversial. Hopes? Well, a few seconds on what I might dream 
and then be a bit more realistic and say some words about how can we escape from our current day prison schools with their obsession with prescribed, substantially irrelevant, obsolete, uncreative, rote, learn, narrow curriculum and testing that achieves little beyond social stratification and the profits of companies like Edexcel Pearson. Well, and streaming, which bows to the whims of the goes and the comings of this world, but is of no benefit whatever to learning. The future? Well, there has to be pretty rapid change to liberate the creativity and imagination of young people, or the species probably doesn't have a future, or one that's bearable to think about anyway. There are already a few schools, unfortunately mostly, but not all private and fee-paying, which I call pioneers of possibility. They stimulate and release the natural desire of young human beings to learn in a non-coercive environment. They encourage and motivate self-direction through curiosity, interest, collaboration with others, and satisfy the deep human need for competence. These schools should immediately be incorporated and fully funded into the state sector as experimental special schools, free for all parents who want them. They could become laboratory schools attached to teacher training institutions. How do we move this monolithic, coercive, anxiety-ridden state system where nearly all of our kids are as we develop a cohort of teachers with the skills to foster self-directed learning? We should begin to change our mainstream schools with the introduction of 20% time. This would give students of all ages the opportunity to follow their own interests for the equivalent of, say, one day a week, ideally in mixed age groups sharing particular enthusiasms. This could be generously funded with up-to-date technological tools, using the money saved by the abolition of useless SATs and GCSEs. Testing could be limited to an 18-plus diploma, as is already the case in educationally successful countries like Finland. There's a growing 20-time literature from the US, supported by companies like Google, to demonstrate that this is a totally realistic and future employment proposal. As the 20% begins to change the whole experience of school, as an attractive and convivial place to be, it could fairly quickly grow to 50%. And my guess would be that some schools would find ways of transforming the whole curriculum before too long. This would make possible basing the whole everyday management of the school on democratic processes that fully respect the human rights of all participants, whatever their ages. Oh dear, there goes my two minutes. Thanks for listening. Hi, my name is Kimberly, and I am Director at Holistic Learning, a company dedicated to engaging and empowering learners. I'm also a primary school teacher and forest school leader at King Alfred School, a progressive school in London for students aged 4 to 18. I'm really excited to contribute to this discussion. Someone I admire recently shared with me her thoughts on this topic that our real purpose as educators is to create invitations to wonder, to challenge with whys, and then have fun collectively designing and co-creating those learning experiences. So here goes. What if we re-evaluate and reconnect with the whole notion of education and its purpose? What if, instead of a commitment to knowing and memorising facts within a curriculum, Our commitment was to explore what feels relevant to know and understand in different circumstances. What impact might this have on student motivation, on the ability to be creatively curious, critically reflect, to solve problems and be open and able to respond thoughtfully, rather than in a programmed response? What if we really explored the value of creativity and the arts in education? not simply as subjects to be taught, but as uniquely human experiences and aptitudes to live and learn through? What if wellness was recognised as a foundation upon which all learning and educational opportunities should be built? What if that extended to the whole community, such as teachers, support staff and the students' families as well? What if students were given the opportunity to have a say in what and how they learn? What if we stop making education competitive? Neither students nor teachers nor schools should be pitted against each other. 
When education is competitive, no one really wins. What if we collectively and proactively explored alternatives to exams so that we all reconnect with the purpose of assessment and use it for what it was intended, to help the whole educational community support and extend learning opportunities? In summary, what if we could offer an education that nurtures and develops not only students' intellectual capacities, but their physical, emotional, social, creative and artistic capabilities? Every student deserves equal and balanced access to holistic learning. And it is my commitment to connect with anyone wanting to share innovative practice. We would love to connect. To join our upcoming workshops and to contribute your own wonderings, contact me on holisticlearning at outlook.com or follow us on www.facebook.com forward slash holistic learning education. Thank you. My name is Antoinette Reed, and my seven-year-old daughter attends the East Kent Sudbury School. My hope for the future of education would definitely incorporate an end to standardisation and the grading and testing, which forms a cornerstone of the current mainstream educational system. The categorisation of our children into their knowledge retained, levels reached, deemed intelligence, etc., have all served to warp our general understanding of what learning is. So it's moved it away from the innate and natural curiosity and wonder we have as humans for the world around us and has morphed it into a concept which dictates that learning can only happen in certain places, in prescribed ways, and it's something that we have to impart to our children and that they will actively resist it unless we force them or make them learn And I think for self-directed education to be successful would require equitable access to resources and the support and the facilitations that children would need to pursue their learning and to gain the education best suited for them. (music) 